Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I am doing over this 43C pony trailer. It's a bit whiffy in there and I can't understand why. Maybe it's had too many ponies in it. These first came out in 1968. But not only that, I'm also doing a second vehicle today to tow this trailer. It is the number 64B MG1100, made in 1966. This is the one that came out with the dog in the rear. Hello fella, how are you going there? Oh, as I thought, there's no restraint for this animal in the back there, which is an offence in Australia. You get a fine for that. This uh, front grille is a little bit uh, shabby, so mm, I think I can see some potential in that. So I'm going to take these on board and give them my best shot. Well, there's not much green paint left on this vehicle and uh, the interior is a little bit dirty. As for this uh, pony trailer, that could do with a respray and maybe some new shiny axles and spruce up the wheels and chassis. So to begin with, I'm going to have to remove only one rivet on this model. The rear rivet's held in with a tab, so that makes it a little bit easier. On the downside, there is a bit of a dent in the roof that I'm going to have to fix. There's a little close-up of that dog in the back there. I think it might be a collie. And just for a change, on the back there, the tow hook is actually in good condition. Here's a quick inspection of the trailer. Once again, there's only one rivet to remove on the base. The tow hitch is sturdy and in good condition. The rear tailgate works well. Uh, there's a few scratches in this uh, transparency that I should try and clean up, but I can't guarantee that it's going to look brand new at the end of this makeover. Here's the type of screws I use when I'm putting it back together. They are M2 screws, they are 2 millimeters in diameter and therefore when I drill out the hole to tap to accept the screws during the rebuild I will use a 1.4 or sometimes a 1.5 mil drill bit to drill out the hole. I then screw them in using this hand chuck with a small allen key placed into the end of it. This is a close up of the screw tap that I use to cut the thread. So let's get on with it. First of all, obviously I put the model in the vise, then using my 1.5 drill bit, I drill out the rivet post. It's self centralizing of course, because I'm doing this first. And that bit of tape around the drill there is to make sure I don't go too deep. So after I've drilled the center hole, I now remove the edge of the rivet so I can remove the base. To do that, I use a slightly larger drill. I lift the front out first, followed by the rear because the rear is held on by that tab, you see. Now, on inspection, I think I've maybe butchered this post a little bit, so I'll have to file that flat. Inside we've got these plastic parts here, we've got the interior plus this plastic suspension spring. I'll pop that off, you can see it's kind of curved. Ideally they want to be flat, that way the suspension will work better on the model. Now here's an interesting thing, the interior would have looked like this when it came out of the plastic moulding and it had to be folded before it could be inserted into the model. To remove this windscreen, I'm going to use a very shallow cut drill to remove the edge of this rivet. And then it will just pop out like this. Looking at this windscreen, I can see it's got a bit of a gouge in the front there. So I'm going to have to sand that back with some fine emery paper. Here's a close up of the butchered uh, post. So I file it flat and then I can cut a screw thread in it using my tap. Here I am test fitting that uh, M2 screw and it looks quite good. I removed the wheels off the base using my Dremel by wearing away the end of the axle. If 
Now I'm going to pull apart the trailer. This one's got a very shallow rivet on the front there. So I must be careful not to go too deep. I very carefully use my battery drill to drill the majority of the rivet off and then I finish it off by hand. And voila! The base just attaches like that. That was quite easy. To remove the tailgate you have to open it up and lift it up like that out of these grooves at the rear. These are in very good condition. To take this uh, transparency out to clean it, I'm going to have to cut these two rivets out. Once again using my shallow cut drill. Don't want to go through the roof on this one. You can see here how the windows have been damaged uh, by sunlight and play etc. And I'm hoping to be able to polish these marks out. I'm going to take the wheels off the trailer now to enable me to repaint it. Nice floorboard detail on that. Now I'm using these uh, enamel paints today. They're by Revel and I call these my BP colours because coincidentally this green and yellow are the exact colours that I use for the BP tanker. So it must have been uh, a popular colour that was used by Matchbox and I'm sure they used gallons of the stuff. So I've got uh, Revel number 12 for the yellow and Revel number 61 for the green on the MG. Look at that. It's a perfect match, straight out the pot. That doesn't happen very often. And for the base, I'm using this Vallejo Deep Green and I'm mixing it with some Tamiya X1, which is black. Interesting to note that the Vallejo and the Tamiya are compatible because they are both water-based acrylic paints. And they can also be thinned with the same thinner. So there's a comparison of the the raw deep green and the one that I've tinted with the black. Now it's time to remove the old paint using some chemical paint stripper. I'm wearing rubber gloves today so I don't get any on my fingers. Sometimes I hold these parts with the forceps, other times I use my hands. Depends what mood I'm in. You can see that the paint strip is doing a fantastic job ripping into this paint. After the paint softened, I use this pink toothbrush to remove all the, the paint from the model. Sometimes I have to repeat the process to get the little bits and pieces off that weren't removed the first time round. After I remove the paint, I polish the models using some wire wool. This just helps to remove any imperfections and prepares the model for undercoating and repainting. This MG1100 had a slight dent above the windscreen. I removed it using the rounded end of my center punch and just tapped it out using these uh, pliers as a hammer. There, I'm happy with that. Now I was a little bit overzealous whilst I was uh, removing the paint from this trailer and I actually snapped the rear brace off. I'm a little bit annoyed with myself, I'm going to have to repair it now. So I've made myself some extra work. Luckily a company called Starbond in Los Angeles sent me some sample super glues to use. They uh, sent me quite a variety. There's some thick filler super glue. There's a black medium thick. There's a brown medium that can be used on wood. Uh, but I'm using this medium clear today and I'm going to test it out for the first time. 
and hopefully it can fix this uh, model for me. And if you need an instant bond, you can use this accelerator. Today I'm just using it straight out of the tube. So this is a first for me. These are industrial strength adhesives. And I'm very pleased to be given the opportunity to test them out. What I particularly like about this uh, kit is it comes with this very thin flexible nozzle so I can accurately place a very small amount of adhesive just exactly where it's needed. And I very carefully place it back together trying to line up the cracks. And this is real time by the way. So I've held it for about five seconds. And it seems to have glued quite well. Um, it's so thin, this glue, that it hasn't made any gap appear between the two bits of metal. This red caps to cap the uh, tube to prevent it from clogging up, which is a great idea also. Now look at this. This is like a minute later and it's really quite solid. So thank you Starbond, you've saved the day. Okay, now it's time to undercoat the model. I'm using the Tamiya Fine White Undercoat for this model. It goes on great, look at that. And I place them in my spray booth here to dry. After they're dry, I give them a quick inspection to check for any imperfections or clods of paint or maybe some foreign debris that might be uh, stuck to them. But these look pretty clean. So no problems there. I do love the detail on these though. Check out that grill below the windscreen. Here there's a little tiny fuel cap on the back there, which is lovely. It's got number plate and an MG badge. Can you see the MG badge there on the right? Superb detail that many a kid, myself included, would never have even noticed. We just used to throw them around, but when these came out, they were works of art. Here's the uh, green paint that I mixed up for the trailer base. So I'll paint that now. Looks good. Looks just like the original colour. I love it. See how I'm holding the piece with the forceps just on the little axle point there. I'm going to touch that up with a paintbrush later when it's dried. Now I'm going to paint the MG with this Revel green paint, remember, number 61. Thin it down with some mineral turps, about uh, one third, one quarter to one third of mineral turps. I find it helps it level off really quickly and you get a nice high gloss finish with these enamel paints. This might actually be a little bit watery, but I think I managed to make it work. Just have to keep it moving as I'm spraying it so there's no runs appear. That looks gorgeous. I won't even have to use any uh, top coat for this. Now I'm going to do the same with the trailer. Again, I've thinned it down with some turpentine. I do the interior first, that way if the airbrush tends to splutter when I start it up, any uh, splattering will be on the inside, not on the outside. The base I shot up with some wire brushes, wasn't happy with it, so I gave it a quick coat of this uh, aluminium spray paint. And the front grille and headlights I touched up with a chrome pen. The interior was cleaned with some uh, 
hot soapy water and a toothbrush and it came up beautiful almost new not much left to do now I clean these wheels get the muck out of the the rim on the on the side this tailgate or ramp whatever you call it came up good this suspension plate I wasn't happy with I'm gonna to have to straighten that out so after I've cleaned all these things I put them on a paper towel and I leave them to dry next up I'm gonna use this aluminium polish to try and make these transparencies look a little bit better than they do I've also got these makeup pads that I use to give them a fine polish afterwards and to remove any excess residue left over from the uh, polishing this one's got a bit of a deep groove in it there a bit of damage so for something different I'm going to try this very fine wet and dry emery paper and using it wet I'm just sanding away and trying to reduce the depth of this groove and hopefully make it invisible on the finished model I must admit I am a little bit uh, doubtful that it's going to happen but I'll give it my best shot anyway it took a very long time the emery paper is uh, very soft and subtle on the back of the windscreen there's like a Harry Potter scar so I hit that with some more metal polish and uh, I also did the transparency from the horse box here and that actually came up really good all that faded area just vanished and when I got it as good as I felt I could get it probably about an hour later I figured I would try dipping them in this uh, self shining floor polish that I've done before and maybe just maybe they might actually come up looking pretty good they still got some damage on them but they're heaps better than what they were uh, very important if you do this to cover them up with a little dust cover so you don't come back an hour later and there's a bit of dust or fluff sitting on it. it can be very frustrating it's happened to me before I'm going here for a double dunk can't remember why obviously wasn't happy with the first time around shake off the excess place it on the paper towel cover it with the uh, dust cover and we're all good I might go to bed now next morning I figure let's hit these axles and get them looking good so I put them in my drill chuck and run them over some emery paper this is a little bit coarser than what I used for the windscreen doesn't really take much they come up pretty good I mean they are what they are they're axles you won't really see them anyway they're on the base but it's nice to go the extra extra mile now I'm going to have a go at straightening out this suspension piece I'm going to use heat to do this so I'm going to light up this candle and I'm going to be very careful I'm gently heating it over the flame I don't want this thing to melt as such I just want it to soften up when I think it's been softened enough I just flatten it on my metal guillotine cutting board and it instantly cools and remains flat <laughs> which is what I was after so finally all the parts are ready for reassembly we've got the car and the trailer and the bases are done and the plastics are all cleaned but before I assemble it I've got to put the wheels back on to the bases now there's always a good side and a bad side to a wheel so I inspect them I always make sure that the good side is on the outside and when I'm happy I then reform the ends of the axles using my drill press method beautiful just like a bought one that was the front wheels now for the rear
Here's the repaired axles on the trailer. And here's another look at the base of the car. Now here's a surprise for you. I've actually been doing two of each model today. So this is my first double whammy makeover. I'm going to now put the transparencies back into the models using some clear silicon. I'm just going to put a very small dab here and here. And this way, if somebody chooses to restore these again in the future, they can remove the plastic without damaging it. This was suggested to me by one of my subscribers, and I think it's a great idea. Prior to that suggestion, I used to use a two-part epoxy resin to glue these in. But I shall never do that again. On the car, I'm putting just a, one small blob at the rear here. And placing it in using some tweezers. Got to be very careful that you don't get any silicon on your fingers when you're doing this because when you pick the model up, it just gets everywhere if you're not careful. So after those have dried, next I'm going to refit the tailgate to the trailer. It's a little bit tricky to work it out, but I got there in the end. For this base on the trailer, because this rivet is so shallow, I am left with no option but to glue it into position using a little tiny drop of that Starbond instant adhesive. I'm hoping you will forgive me for doing this but I had no option. Now back to the car, I put the interior back in. the straightened suspension plate followed by the base. Now you have to engage that rear hook first on the base. That's it. And then press the front down into position and secure it using the screw that I placed in the model right at the very beginning. That looks great. Here's a reminder of what this car looked like before I started. There was hardly any original paint on this. The wheels, interior and the windscreen and chassis were all very ordinary. But this is what it looks like now. With a fresh coat of paint, spruced up wheels, polished windscreen and a cleaned interior, I think you'll agree this looks like a brand new model. But wait, there's more. The trailer came up just as good, with its fresh coat of paint, polished windscreens, spruced up tyres and axles. This little trailer came up as sharp as a new pin. It has now been registered as fit for purpose by the Australian Equestrian Society and can now be put to use transporting horses to and from local shows and events. I would like to thank the following people who helped to make this happen. Richard Andrews who donated the horses, Eric Costello for sending me a trailer, and Levy Petty for sending me an MG 1100. Without your contributions this video would not have been made. I hope that you've all enjoyed this video and now until next time, it's goodbye from Marty at Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Oh. Ah, oh, the piece of keeps moving. Marty!